Hey guys, so over on my Patreon I get a lot of questions about um, how to start with pastel pencils, like literally the very beginning, what would you buy paper wise, pencil wise, and uh, what the best stuff is for beginners. Got a lot of people on there who have come from graphite, so I just wanted to make this quick little video to let you know exactly what I would use if I was literally just starting off. So yeah, not too much to, to purchase, I wanted to keep this nice and simple, so we're going to be going over the paper, pencils, sharpeners, and all the little extras. So let's begin with papers. This is the pastel matte paper and this is the only paper I would ever recommend for pastels. Um, it's so much better than any of the other papers you can buy from my experience. It's got a very coarse texture, it's a bit like sandpaper and it just sticks to the, um, the pastels and it allows you to do so many more layers than the other papers. Um, so here we've got loads of different colours, so we've got the dark grey which is my favourite, the light grey next to it there. And then the sand is that yellowish toned one, burgundy, anthracite, and that's light blue on the end there. So this paper comes in boards and also just the paper version. I prefer the paper version, I feel like it's just easier to cut and store and stuff like that. But um, the, the boards do tend to have a little bit more of a coarse texture. But here's the texture of the pastel mat close up, and as you can see it's really unique texture. There's cheaper papers on the market, but they just don't compare, so I wouldn't recommend wasting your time with the cheaper papers, because it's really going to hamper the, um, the technique that you can use in terms of layers and stuff like that. So there's a little colour selection. My favourite is the dark grey and the light grey, and also the sand. And they do have some brighter colours as well, but I've never really felt drawn to the brighter colours. So onto pencils now, and my favourite brand and what I would recommend for beginners are these Stabilo Carbothello pencils. They are really easy to sharpen, they've got a great colour selection, and the leads are quite chalky which makes them really easy to work with and blend together. So that's definitely the set that I would recommend for complete beginners. They are reasonably priced as well, and the ones I have here next to them are the Faber-Castell Pit pencils. Uh, they're pretty similar to the Carbothellos, but I prefer the Carbothellos, not sure why. I think I just prefer the colour range in the Carbothellos. Um, so these ones, I have a few of the Conte of Paris pastels. They're really nice for vivid browns, reds and blues, so they're my go-tos if I need a really nice vivid pop of colour, like in the eyes. But the downside of those is that they're really hard to sharpen. But um, I definitely recommend getting a few of the blues if you are wanting to expand your Carbothello selection. I haven't got the whole set of these, but um, I do like to just get a few of different brands of pencils here and there to suit the needs of any upcoming portrait I have. So moving on to the Caran d'Ache now. These are a mixed bag because they have some lovely colours that you can't get in other sets, like the neutral colours and some of the bright highlight colours like that violet purple there. That's great for getting some nice variation in your highlight colours. But I find that there is some scratchy bits in the leads, which isn't good for a pencil that is this expensive. I think they're around £3 per pencil, so they do break the bank a little bit, but um, I definitely love them for the highlight colours that you can get with them, and also some of the mid-tone neutral colours. So um, yeah, I've, I purchased a few of these here and there as a little treat. <laughs> um, so here's the pan pastels I recommend. They are very dirty, so apologies. I've just got a titanium white. Um, I love these just for getting down a large area of white if I need it. And you can also mix these colours together with the pan pastels, so you don't need to go and buy loads of them. You don't even need to buy any pan pastels if you don't want, but I find that they're really fun to work with. And here's the neutral grey tint. This is great for mixing with other colours as well. I feel like with these five colours that I have here, you can pretty much mix any kind of wildlife fur <laughs> colour if you need to. So there's the titanium white, the neutral grey, and here we've got the black. And next up I've got the orange extra dark. This is like a nice orangey mid-tone brown colour, and I love this for getting a rich brown in um in areas of rich brown <laughs> and we've also got the raw umber that's the darkest brown i've got i've got quite a lot of other pan pastels but these are my five most used ones 
and you can always mix these together as I said with the soft tools and speaking of soft tools apparently they're called soft knives now <laughs> they're not called soft tools anymore but these are basically just um, like a sponge on a stick and these are for blending with the pan pastels but you can also blend out your pastel pencils with these as well they're a really nice high quality spongy bit on the end or you can just get um, cotton buds like I've got here I feel like they work almost as well and they're much cheaper you can also use makeup applicators, like little makeup applicators you can get um, online in big packs if you don't want to splurge on the soft tools. But I really like the triangular one for the little detailed areas. And here is some sharpening methods that I use. So I've got the really heavy grit sandpaper. I couldn't really do it with this pencil because I was filming with one hand. But this is how I sharpen my bigger pencils with a craft knife and then I um, just smooth out the, the lead with the sandpaper because those big pencils you can't use a sharpener. For the Carbothellos this is another reason I love them. Um, they come with a, well they don't come with it but you can buy a sharpener especially for these pencils and as you can see that gives you a really nice sharp lead really easily and they don't break very easily either. You can also use that little Stabilo sharpener with the Faber-Castell pencils because they've got the same size barrel. And also, oh yeah, I forgot to mention this pencil. It's the Creta Color 2, number 2 black chalk. It's the blackest pencil I have ever found. And it's much darker than the Carbothello black. So um, if you really want those really deep, dark black tones, this is a great pencil to purchase and have in your kit. Here's a little comparison of the Creticolor Black Chalk next to the Carbothello Black just to give you an idea of how much blacker that softer lead is of the Creticolor pencil. It doesn't actually look like much of a difference here because I think the lighting was quite head on. But you can see that um, Creticolor has got a much softer lead so it deposits the pigment much more onto the pastel matte paper. Okay, so moving on to the added extras, I've got my thick masking tape, this is 1.5 inches and it's just a standard one from Jackson's Art and this is what I use to stick my pastel matte paper to either my table or a backing board, in this case I'm using some scrap of cardboard because it's really hard to stick to my glass table and I've also got some printer paper to the side there for mixing my pan pastels on and here is some glassing paper, it comes with pastel mat and it's really good for resting your hand on to stop the oils transferring onto the paper and smudging. This is the Swordfish Crank Handle Sharpener and I love this sharpener for sharpening the, car the Caran d'Ache pencils because it keeps the pencil nice and steady so it doesn't break the lead. I will link all of these in the description. So here's my setup for when I start a drawing. I have got some black gouache paint there, which I sometimes use to begin with just to get my dark areas in, but that's definitely not a necessity at all, I've only just started doing that. As you can see there I've put a little hints of black on that um, sketch I've done in the nostrils and the places that I want to kind of keep those black areas really nice and black. Another must-have, in my opinion, is a putty eraser because these are really great for rubbing things out on pastel matte paper. You won't be able to use a normal rubber on pastel matte because it is so um, coarse in texture and you ruin the surface of the paper. So these putty soft erasers are really good for removing any excess graphite marks from the graphite transfer paper that we can use to get our outline onto the paper. So here's the glassine paper that I was speaking about. It's got a really nice soft texture and it's shiny so that the pastel pigment doesn't come off onto it. And here is the graphite paper that we can use to get our outlines onto the pastel mat. It's basically got graphite on one side, so you put it face down with your sketch or your reference photo on top and then you can transfer the outlines onto the pastel mat paper. Just thought I'd mention my lighting quickly. This is a light from Amazon. It's a head down daylight lamp. And the daylight aspect is really important because the bulb is basically a neutral colour, it's not too cool and it's not too warm. So it reflects the colours of the piece um, that you're working on in a, a better way so that you're not making things too blue or red or whatever. And I have my reference photo up on my iPad 
Pro 2021. Um, the older versions, you can't zoom in as much on the on the reference photo, I found. So I got a new one and um, it's really great for reference photos and colours and everything like that. So that's about everything. I'm going to get on with this drawing now. Um, I really hope this is helpful and I'll see you in the next video.